All right, so this week we're covering a concept called central tendency. Central tendency is the attempt to get a single value that gives us some sense of the middle or the center of a distribution of scores. So if we have a set of scores like this, you see we have a series of x values, uh, we can get several measures of central tendency to try to get a sense of where the middle of that distribution is. So we'll talk about three specifically in our class. So the first one we're going to talk about is the mode. And I'm going to start with the mode because it's probably one of the easier ones to identify. The mode is the most frequent occurring value. And so what this means is basically that it is whatever value has the highest F, the highest frequency, right? So if you had a frequency table, um, so I'll do a quick example. If you had a frequency table with X and F, you would simply look for which of the F's is the greatest. So in this case, because F of 12 is the largest, the mode would be four. So the mode can be seen quickly in a frequency table. You can also look for it as we learned about in a distribution like a histogram that graphs the distribution simply by looking for the peak. And if we just have a set of raw scores, we would look for whatever score occurs most often. So in this case, we see that seven has three occurrences and all the other ones occur only once. So the mode would be seven. So it's important to realize the mode doesn't necessarily mean the majority. It simply means it occurs more often than any other value in the distribution. So the majority of scores are not a seven, but seven is the modal score. The next measure of central tendency we'll talk about is the median. And the median is concerned with the location of scores in a distribution. So the median is the value at the 50th percentile. And so essentially what that means is it divides the scores in two even halves. We can find the median by finding the data's midpoint or the median location. The midpoint is found at the location n plus one over two. And so what that means is we would take the number of scores, add one, and divide that by two. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven scores. So we would have seven plus one over two equals four. So we would find the fourth score when these scores are put in order from smallest to largest. They must be in order because the median cares about location. So we go one, two, three, four. This is the fourth score. Because it's the fourth score, we look for what score the, what the value of the score is. It's a seven. And so in this case, our median is seven. So right now in this distribution, we have the median is seven. And we also have that the mode is seven. The last one we'll talk about is the one that requires a little bit more mathematics. It's the arithmetic mean. Now you might have referred to this simply as the average, and we'll just refer to it as the mean for the rest of our class, basically. But the mean requires us to take the sum of the scores and divide by the number of scores. So every mean is a sum over a count. And we see the sum in the sigma and the count in the sample size. Now, if you were to do this for a population, we would represent it with a capital N, but it's the same math, okay? So the notation here just changes sample population. So what we would do is add up all the scores we have and divide by the number there are. So if we do that, we have 21 plus nine is 30 plus 10, 40, 49, and we have seven scores. So in this case, 49 is the sum of X, seven is the number of scores. So then we get that our mean is seven. So we have that the mean is seven, the median is seven, the mode is seven. And that's because this distribution is symmetrical. And we can see that because right around the center of the score, we see that they go down and they go up in the same increments. And so this distribution is a symmetrical distribution. And with a symmetrical distribution, the mean, the median, and the mode will all be equal as they are here. So these are the simple ways that we can calculate the basic measures of central tendency. And as we saw in our previous videos, we can also get these quickly out of a frequency distribution. So if you need a little refresher on that, I would encourage you to look back at the chalkboard chats from the frequency section.